It's that time again, that time when we saunter into our favorite virtual bar, talk about what's going on in this crazy world we live on, live in with our topic today. Words matter and what we say has consequences. Actually, I said subtitle, right? What's the title? What, not who, was behind the assassination attempt of President Trump. I'm joined today by Greg and Ken, and I'm your host, Chris, and this is Three Pastors, Walk into a busy bar. Busy bar. A busy bar. <laughs> was a busy bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we got to do, um, we got to do the most popular segment of the show now. People just love this part. Do we have a drum roll? Uh, I think we have a drum fill. Drum fill. I don't think we have a drum roll. But it'd be good to have one. Yeah, I think we should have it as yeah. Yeah. part of the intro to the disclaimer. Yeah, like a... Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> let's <laughs> rock <roll. laughs> Oh, wait, that's a different show. That was yeah. a different show. Hey, yeah. start, your in- <laughs> start your disclaimer. Oh, man. All right, well, take it away, kid. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the respected speakers and not unrespected speakers <laughs> and do not necessarily what? reflect the opinions policies or doctrines of Athol Baptist Church and its members or us <laughs> it could be us I suppose <laughs> oh man oh, yeah we were listening I was listening to of course uh, as everybody is by now aware obviously that there was a assassination attempt on President Trump um, this last uh, week and uh, and so there's just been floods of commentary and man, it was like an hour after it happened, people were mm. putting out podcasts where they were interviewing people about it and mm-hmm. and people were just uh, uh, going bonkers over it. It's kind of the interesting thing of the podcastosphere, if you will. Um, man, it's just super responsive these days. It's almost real time. Yeah. It, re- it was so mm-hmm. fast. You know, people had to been on the phones and messaging people. Come on, let's do a show. Yeah. We got to say this, or that, and seize the opportunity. And it, isn't it interesting, though, when you, I, I Googled it, uh, situation, and I was, I was a little bit shocked. Now, you do have the pod people out there. But what I came up with was a lot of, <laughs> what do I call the media today? Do I call it left wing? Uh, I would say I mainstream. It? Liberal mainstream media. ABC, NPR, NBC, CBS, CNBC, BBC, PBS, Today, Wikipedia, CNN, New York Times, and Wall Street Journal all come up first. And just boom, boom, boom. There was no what I would consider uh, conservative conservative media uh, involved in that. And and that's Google telling us what we're going to watch. Yeah. It has really gotten to the point where if you want to get a kind of unbiased opinion about something, you really do have to listen to podcasts. Yeah, you got to search it. You're not going to find it in the news media. It's just not there. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the stuff that I heard reported that same day was just, it was abysmal. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just seems like the Washington Post is doing everything that it possibly can to not report on his assassination attempt. Yeah. They're even reporting assassination attempts on people from other parts of the world rather than his. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the wildest thing, man. It is. Uh, and, you know, it's, I, I guess that's kind of what brought me to like, you know, what what do we want to talk about 
in this because yep yeah, i mean we could talk about a lot of stuff there's there's plenty of conspiracies already floating around there's already people talking about the shooter and there's already people talking about you know the reasons why in the deep state and it's just all over the place man but the thing that as believers we don't need to be too worried about is a lot of the agendas and political kind of machinations that are out there that kind of cause these things or kind of are behind these things because you know we don't want to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world mm -hmm. because that's not what a good soldier does a good soldier is one who doesn't entangle himself with the affairs of this world is aware of them but is not entangled by them and so we didn't want to have another like hour-long discussion about you know the event itself or how the guy got up on the roof to begin with and you know why was there a bunch of female secret service agents and this cheetle lady why is she not being fired and you know it, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on the stuff that you hear i'm more concerned and more interested in the why like what would and i think you expressed it best in this um uh, in this in this description for the podcast that you made, what could possibly drive a 20 year old young man to become an assassin and attempt to kill a candidate for president of the United States of America? What would enter into his mind? What influences did he have that would cause him to think that it was appropriate to sacrifice his life? for this thing, like this one thing, like to eliminate Trump, like what kind of psychology does it take? What kind of morality, what kind of, of philosophies? And, and the thing is, we don't know enough about this guy yet mm -hmm. to really make a determination as to what he was reading or listening to or anything like that. I'm sure all that will come out at some point, but it's interesting. You know what I mean? It's like, we've been a long time, without an assassination attempt. I mean, it's been like 20 years since we've had an assassination attempt. Mm -hmm. That we know about. That we know about. Um, or that became like major news. Mm -hmm. And that last one was when George W. Bush, Bush had the grenade thrown at him, which ended up being a dud. Um, I made comment to you earlier that you didn't push Bush Jr. on here because he was overseas and then some guy threw some shoes at him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was pretty serious. That was funny because he dodged both of them, too. Right. I mean, he, the shoe got thrown up. He dodged it, and then the Secret Service came over to him, and then George Bush was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then he dodged it another one. He's like, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, These are it not was, bullets. It was pretty classic. Um, that made more of a statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, uh, I got this. Don't worry about this. Or the deal. shoe. It's like, Bleh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it actually, yeah, it did make a statement. That's for sure. Um, but there haven't been that many, actually. Um, of course, we all know well, there's what in the past 60 years, we've seen six attempts on presidents. Um, John F. Kennedy, obviously, uh, in Dealey Plaza in, in Dallas. I've been there um, and I've seen it. I've been up to the uh, to the to the window where Lee Harvey Oswald was at, supposedly. <laughs> There's still, there's still, it, it's funny because when you go down there, there's a hawker on every corner selling you a conspiracy newspaper. I mean, they're <laughs> everywhere. They're tell, they're trying to sell you on whatever their conspiracy du jour is over that. Um, and then you had Robert F. Kennedy, um, who was killed at a Los Angeles hotel. Um, and then you have George Wallace. Back in 1972, left him paralyzed from waist down. Um, Gerald Ford in 1975, um, and he was not hurt in either incident. And then, of course, you had uh, Ronald Reagan, the 40th president, who was in Washington, D.C., um, and got shot by John Hinckley Jr. And um, got a new movie coming out. Oh, yeah? About him. Yeah. Looks pretty good, actually. About Reagan? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to think of the guy who plays him does a really good job. Dennis Quaid. Dennis, Dennis Quaid. Quaid. Yeah. Yeah. He would be good at that. I like Dennis Quaid here lately. Mm -hmm. Doing some good stuff. 
Um, but uh, in any case, we just had number seven on Saturday morning when 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks um, climbed a low rooftop, fired multiple rounds at ex-president Donald Trump less than 150 yards away. Shortly after, he began to pre- his presentation at a, a rally in rural Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, besides wounding Trump in the right ear, one spectator was killed by, and two others were critically injured before Crooks was shot dead by the Secret Service. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where all the kind of people are already starting with all the conspiracies and all the, you know, how does a guy get 150 yards from a presidential candidate by climbing up on a roof when you had snipers who had a clear line of sight at him and... Mm-hmm. You know, there's video of a Secret Service agent moving people away from the back of the stage right before the shot happened, almost as if he's clearing people out of the way because he knows a bullet's coming. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of there's the video of the all there's like three female Secret Service agents and they get President Trump into the vehicle and she cannot get her her weapon holstered. Mm. She just like. It's it, it, there is there's a lot of little pieces that are just like, are we just inept or are we just negligent? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of those questions that need to be answered for sure. Um, but our objective today is not to talk about the facts of the shooting um, as much as it it is to have to do with uh, the conversation that we want to have today, a conversation about what leads a young man near the prime of his life to become convinced that his life would be best spent murdering another man he barely knows. That's the question. And what forces were at work in his mind, his heart, his emotions? Could those forces also be at work in us or somebody we know? Um, and so, like I was saying, what we do know about this guy is very slim. Um, we know his name. We know it graduated from high school two years ago. <clears throat> we know that he was among several students given an award for math and science. So he wasn't an idiot. Um, his former classmates have said that he was bullied almost every day. He was just an outcast. You know how kids are nowadays. That's there's a whole podcast about that, really. The nature of what's going on in our schools, that this is just becoming more and more prevalent. You know, and these kids, they're not, it's not like back in the 50s when a kid would go get bullied and then his dad would tell him, you know, it's like, well, you're going to have to stand up for yourself. And then there was a fist fight and then it was all over and done with. You know, now it's like, for some reason, the bullying just doesn't stop, and it goes from middle school to high school, and these people, they just get unhinged. Uh, and there's a psychology to that that, you know, when they go out, they're going to they're gonna lash out at people. Um, and so, you know, there is something to be said about that. That seems to be something that most of these shooters have in common, though, mm-hmm. is that yeah. they were bullied as kids. Outcasts. Outcasts. Yeah. Going all the way back to Columbine. It- Mm-hmm. You know, I <clears throat> when I did a little research, the I think it was CNN. The picture they had of this young man, it looked like it was from high school, and he had a T-shirt on that had an American flag on it. And uh, George Washington was in the area of the <clears throat> of the stars, and I thought, here's a patriotic young kid. What what turned him from that point? maybe two years ago, maybe three years ago when this picture was taken, to today. Well, that's another interesting point. He was a registered Republican. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but had given money to uh, a Democrat he had given He had given party. He had given money to a Progressive Political Action Committee on January 20th of 2021. Right, right. So he was obviously listening to, watching, uh, becoming uh, susceptible to the rhetoric that is out there on the left. That's that's my thoughts. I mean, it is possible that he thought or he viewed Trump in the lens that a lot of like, and we're going to talk about the media here in a minute, but a lot of the way that he has been, that he's been named in media and in podcasts 
Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard him called Hitler. I've heard him called mm -hmm. a threat to democracy. I've heard him called uh, a, a literal Nazi. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it's the the there's so many instances where platforms have just utilized ad hominem attacks to to demonize him mm -hmm. um, that if you were a person that was unhinged and you loved our country and you knew a, that there was a guy who was a literal Nazi who was Hitler incarnate, who was a threat to our democracy. Joe Biden said that, by the way, that that Trump and his MAGA Republicans mm -hmm. are a threat to democracy. Right. Um, you know, I mean, you, 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 you say those things over and over again, long enough. And he may have believed that he was doing the patriotic thing Which by one, eliminating this evil person. That was one of Hitler's mantras. You know, if you say it long enough, loud enough, people will start believing it. Yep. It's a super nuanced situation. Like it's not good. You're not going to be able to, to like hammer down like one thing that, is going to be like this was the thing that turned this kid. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it was it was a, it was four years of just one after another mm -hmm. after another after another after another after another of some person on TV or some podcast he was listening to or some politician or whatever calling you know him a name or calling him you know attacking him or accusing him and then you know all the things that are going on with the with the court cases and and. It's just, it was a lot, man. Yeah. It was a lot. You know, when we talk about conditioning, mental conditioning, psychological conditioning, um, you know, grooming of victims, um, back decades ago, they used to talk a lot about brainwashing, religious cults. It's the same kind of psych psychological conditioning occurs in different spheres of, of life. And I believe we have a form of that right out in the open in our face yeah. here with the way the news and things are being mm -hmm. portrayed, mischaracterized, stereotyped, mm -hmm. categorized, classified. Uh, it's, it's evil. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said earlier, all, you know, you, you Google this and here's what you come up with. All left leaning media and nobody was concerned. You know, there wasn't, I didn't hear any, any rhetoric about, you know, well, the country's divided and, uh, you well, know, CNN we come and, and CNN CNN and insinuated that nothing happened. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And the continually, uh, I continually heard attempted assassination. Mm -hmm. No, not attempted. What apparent. was the word? Apparent, apparent assassination. Apparent. I think, what? The guy took a bullet. Excuse me. That's an well, assassination. Not attempt. to mention the guy that was behind him, that his brains were splattered all over his yeah. wife and kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. And he was, you know, I read a little bit about him. Good man. Fireman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the mm -hmm. daughter wrote something up on, uh, I can't remember what uh, app it was, but uh, she was talking about, you know, we lost a good man. Died mm -hmm. shielding his wife, wife and daughter. And, uh, that's heroic right there, man. Yeah. That's the kind of supporters that this guy has. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and I, I just, just get into the news for a minute because it, it is. I'm not sure that you can even find news anymore. Like I was looking at that yesterday and today. Um, the difference between op-ed and um, reporting and – when you think about op-ed, actually, that's all a dying form. Like, there's not even, there's hardly any op-ed anymore. Op-ed specifically refers to, like, written opinion mm -hmm. in newspapers, it's editorial. So you don't see a lot of that anymore except for, like, on podcasts or, mm -hmm. or vlogs or whatever. And those are all kind of going away. What you see more now is you see what they call informed commentary is what it's called. And basically, it's just these shows that are on these major news networks like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, you know, all these mm -hmm. different news outlets that are supposed to be news agencies. All right. Neutral. But 90% of their programming is just informed commentary where they take the news and they make commentary about the news. Um, and it's like, well, 
isn't that what people are supposed to do for themselves? Mm -hmm. Aren't they supposed to take the news, then digest it, and then they're supposed to have commentary with their friends and family about mm -hmm. what happened? But, you know, that's not that's not the way that it goes anymore, you know? I think it's it's gone beyond that. And there's it's no longer news reporting. It's truth arbitration. Yeah, yeah. They are deciding what is the truth about anything and framing it that way as they present it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's presented as a done deal. This is what it is. This is what happened. And they're just wordsmithing their way around mm -hmm. what's really going on. Let's see. Yeah. There's an organization out there trying to take down PragerU NewsGuard. Mm. It's, it's one of the fact checker organizations. Oh, I thought I the saw biggest. somewhere where there was like a, a movement of people trying to shut NewsGuard. Down. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right because they're There's not a war over the news. They're not a fact checker organization. <laughs> well, you know, like, what facts are you checking? Facts are facts. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What you're checking is not facts. What you're checking is someone's opinions about the facts yeah. is what you're checking. Yeah. And 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 so that's kind of what happens with all of this and on social media and, and but in particular the news, man. It's like you you if you watch CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or any of those for an hour, you're going to get maybe 10% news. Maybe. And that's usually going to be on a klaxon underneath rolling by on a scrolling, mm -hmm. you know, text. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be someone at a desk or someone at a table with four other commentators, and they're all going to be making commentary on whatever truth it is that they're trying to smith their opinion into. It's a great way of putting it. Um, and standing on their celebrity. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> leveraging, leveraging their celebrity. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know, it's no wonder that you get people listening to that and they just get frothed up about stuff. You know, because they mm -hmm. can't make an opinion for themselves. They're told what their opinions are, uh, and that. I think happens on the right and the left as far as like news is concerned. Because if you think about like Fox news, which is supposed to be traditionally right, it has, it does kind of the same thing. They, they report a little bit of news and then the rest of it is just commentary, commentary. on whatever news that they're. And then the mm -hmm. commentary just ends up being opinion of whatever the majority opinion of the producers mm -hmm. happens to be. Um, and you know, that might be what this kid was listening to. You know I mean? Maybe he was, Maybe he was listening to a lot of these news agencies, or maybe he had some podcasts that he were listening to, or whatever the case may be. But here's a kid. He had no past criminal record. Um, he worked at a nursing home as a dietary aide. Um, he said that he was, uh, the district attorney said that he was unknown to investigators in his county and had never been on their radar. Um the FBI has not yet identified any underlying ideology or threatening writing or social media posts from them. That's, that's substantial mm -hmm. to not have any substantial like social media postings that the FBI can, can find like just like that. I mean, that says something. Um, the FBI believes that he acted alone. They said that there were bomb making materials in his vehicle um, and that he used an air style rifle, which authorities say that was that his father purchased. So it was his dad's gun that he utilized. Um, and so, you know, here's this guy, you know, that is just this, he's just this guy working at a nursing home as a dietary aide, the graduated high school, the perfect assassin. <laughs> I know. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's bonkers. It, it, that part makes me go. Wait a minute. Why you would do that on your own and be that accurate and that close to being successful? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. I mean, I, I don't want to get off onto a tangent, no, but I, I could make that hundred and fifty yard shot with my AR six yeah, times in a row. I, I watched an interview with a guy who he did uh representative in some state, but he was a sniper in the war, and he said that shot every uh boot camp recruit is required yeah, to make that shot. 150 yards is nothing. Yeah, he said that's that's not a shot that, that yeah. you know is is magnificent or amazing. No, it's super easy. It's obvious that he had no training um and that he was just inspired by whatever ideology had possessed him yeah. 
to go and do this thing. And um, do you? No training. He had to have shot that gun before. That's still you're going to need a little bit of breathing no. and well, trigger. a couple of the no commentaries I heard was one was that. There was a policeman was approaching him just before that shot. Right. Was backing down, trying to talk him off of the roof. As soon as he was out of the way, he turned and took the shot. The other one was if if Trump would have been looking at straight not ahead. at, at mm-hmm. not at him, he it would have hit. But he turned his head toward him, and that's why it grazed. Definitely. So there's a couple of factors there that mm-hmm. messed up the shot. Well, that, yeah. it's obvious he had no training because a person who had training would have never shot at his head. First of all, he would have shot center mass. Um, 150 yards is an easy shot. He would have set up in a way that he could have gotten away. He, he was not trained. He was a kid that had played a lot of Call of Duty. He knew how to use the, use the gun because he had watched it happen a thousand times on Call of Duty, the action of the rifle. Oh. Okay, commentary I don't know about from that. our engineer. <laughs> Did, the, it doesn't surprise me that he was deeply involved in, in video games like that, which is what tells me that that's the reason why he missed is because he he had video game training is what he had. Yeah. And and but that beyond that, you know, what I mean it's like he physically drove there that day, climbed up on a ladder, crawled over on a roof, and took aim at a human being. Which means that when he looked through that site, he didn't see a human being. He saw a threat to democracy mm-hmm. is what he saw. Um, and the uh, it's it's thankfully he wasn't trained because if he was, Trump would be dead. But thankfully he wasn't. And now, you know, he's dead, you know, because the guy on the opposite roof was trained. Mm-hmm. I um, think we're going to find that, that that he had something. I don't think you just grab an AR, climb on a roof, five hundred feet away from somebody, and, and come close to a target that's you know twelve inches by twelve inches. That's got to you. If he didn't, if he hadn't fired that gun before, there's things that just don't make sense to make that good of a shot. Well, he probably and, did. I mean, he knew where his dad's gun was. He obviously knew how to mm-hmm. use it, so I think it'll. Come it's reasonable out. to expect yeah. he'd gone shooting with his dad sometime. Mm-hmm. I would argue, as a person who has done a lot of long distance right. shooting, mm-hmm. I would argue that 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 was not a good shot. That that was that was a failed shot, deeply failed shot. Um, oh and man, come on! He got hit in the ear only because he turned his head. He got hit in the ear. The you don't second. know why. You don't know why he got hit in the ear. He could have been aiming at his chest, for all we know. We don't know what he was aiming at. The guy, if he was aiming well, at his head, that, that would have been— You're telling me one thing, but saying another here. You're saying—that's <laughs> a weird statement. No, it, um, I'm saying that he, that he, didn't, he didn't know what he was doing. Like, if the, if the scope was off, maybe he had never, he had never doped it. There, there's all kinds of things that could have happened. I mean, if you— sh- if you shoot at a guy, what I'm saying is if you shoot at a guy at 150 yards with an AR that has a scope on it, mm-hmm. you're going to hit him. I mean, anybody okay. can do that. It, it, but it's already been shown in the video that if President Trump would have been looking forward, that bullet would have entered his temple. But right when the shot occurred, he turned his head. You're speculating which, that. You don't know uh, the bullet traje- trajectory. Well, you're speculating you that the guy didn't have what I know. Training. What I know is that he had a full body target and he missed it at 150 yards. That's what I know. And that is not good. I mean, he missed. I mean, he missed. And he missed five times. So I, he did not have training. A trained person, Trump would be dead. Hands down, 100%. No questions asked. Um, so I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really care. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, for the purposes of our discussion, it doesn't really matter if he's trained or not. Let's say, for instance, that he was CIA trained. Okay, well, 
you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever. If he was, if he was CIA trained, and or maybe he was in, you know, uh, the son of an ex Navy SEAL, and they shot long distance shooting like every weekend or whatever. The simple fact of the matter is, is that he missed, mm-hmm. um, and he missed five times. And in the process of missing five times, he killed an innocent man. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, to me says that there is a psychology involved in this guy that he that he that he developed somehow and i'm speculating that it's just the abundance of things that he heard starting with the media you know i mean it's it's like right. coming out of a high school we don't you know that's going to be part of the investigation you know what what was he taught in high school we know that our mm-hmm. education system, public school education system, is is left leaning, and uh, yeah, he may have come out with uh, ideas that led him down the last two years a path of looking at all those blogs and blogs and and uh, well, yeah. the, the type of media that would cause him to hate Trump. And if he had no friends and he was lonely and he was playing some of these, you know, games like. Mm-hmm. You know, Ethan was saying that yeah. if that's a if that's something that actually happened, yeah. I mean, he was getting in contact with all kinds it, of nefarious people. One thing, what was going it, on. yeah, it, it, Ethan, you you said that there is a game called "Get Down, Mr. President," and it's Trump. And, and the guy in the video is Trump. Okay, that's over the top. Are you sure that's real? Yep, that's real. You checked your sources? Did NewsGuard look at that? (laughs) (laughs) There is a game called Get Down, Mr. President. I'm looking at it. He had 150 hours on that. He had 150 hours. A very fun game that may or may not end. Did someone being injured? A group of friends can play this. Someone starts it by pressing a finger to their their own ear. What? I think that's that's probably a, a like public game, but here's Mr. President on Steam, and yeah, it is a guy who looks like Trump. Oh yeah, even has it's the a- even has the decorations around the stage that look like Trump. It said, and the the rump. background says Rump for President. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, we. We we are beyond help in yeah. this country. I mean that. If you go down far enough, you can probably see this video. <laughs> oh, he's got a review on here. Yeah, his review says, "Hope this prepares me for the real life." Or real life. Okay, uh, Ethan is wow. saying that. Well, thanks for showing us that, Ethan. You know, my son, he's the engineer, um, and he was telling us about he was playing this. There was the, the guy who was a shooter played this game. I'll get down, Mr. President. I, I don't know that we can confirm, like, right off the bat if that's true that he actually mm-hmm. played this. But what's terrifying is that there's a game out there called Get Down, Mr. Mr. President, President, where it, is, it looks like hostage. Trump and you're, like, shooting at him. Yeah. That's bonkers, man. I didn't even think about the whole kind of video game genre or, like, influence that may be happening with this that, young man. I'm well, disturbed. Think how, how short of a leap that is. That's basically virtual reality. Yeah. It's you spend 150 hours in virtual reality. What are you going to want to do in reality? The same. My God, well, if you are not, it, yeah, if you are not psychologically stable, you're going to go act it out. Sure. For sure. Impressionable. Mm-hmm. And that psychological yeah. instability uh, has been around this young man for pretty much his entire educational career. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, kind of with that and in, uh, into the mix and then with all the media out there as well with the name calling and all of that, you know, I mean, it's like I, I don't really know what the answer to the media is. Like, what what do you do to kind of convince them that there's some responsibility to take? Mm-hmm. Like, you can't you can't have a show. On a, on a major news network that calls itself a news network and bash someone personally, ad hominem, ad hominem attack, and then not take responsibility for when something bad happens to that person? 
it's like, I just don't understand, like, how you could not think that you have some responsibility. There was a guy, I was watching uh, X, and there was a guy they had filmed who was standing in front of the press box where all the press's cameras were at at the event. And they're all with their cameras and everything, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, you know, all those guys are out there. And he's standing in front of them, and he's just yelling at the top of his voice, this is your fault. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, he's not absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. They share some responsibility in this. You could even go so far to say that Biden bears some responsibility for it as well. I want to read a couple bits out of this this commentary article. Um, Starting right in here, other observers stated that the apparent increase of anti-Trump vitriol and leftist activism over the past few years is to blame for the attempt on former president's life. Some have even suggested that Biden himself bears some of the blame. I'm going to jump down here. Um, This other person added, people will say it's too early or reckless to say this, but left-wing ideologies and political movements are inexorably connected to violence, always. Columnist Joe Concha pointed to a comment Biden made on Monday. I don't know which Monday this is. It isn't today. But it had to have been the previous Monday. We're done. Yeah, th- this is after the debate. Yeah. Right? Biden said this. We're done talking about the debate. Biden has said it's time to put Trump in a bullseye. Defend that. Go ahead, Concha pressed Biden. Try to defend that rhetoric after all we've just witnessed with Trump coming to a centimeter of being assassinated. Um... Conservative filmmaker Robbie Starbuck wrote on X, Joe Biden and the Democrats don't get to wiggle out of this with half-hearted statements. They framed Trump as a modern Hitler. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I can't tell you how many news articles or how many interviews I've watched of Democratic senators where they literally call him Hitler and a threat to, threat to our democracy. He uh, quotes Biden as saying, Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. That was his post on X, Biden's. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat to everything America stands for. Yeah. Yeah. Ed Wilkness, (laughs) one of the uh, ex-respondents, said uh, this post could be a page straight out of an assassin's political manifesto. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is inciting violence. I mean, you, you know, they talk about, you know, freedom of speech. You know, you can have freedom of speech until it incites violence. I mean, in in reality, you know, what other statements would need to be made? You know, is that really freedom of speech when you tell a, a, a millions of people that this guy is literally a threat to our freedom and then in another statement say that he needs to be put in a bullseye? It's like, yeah, just put all those quotes together like yeah. some crazy person's going to do. And now all of a sudden, guess what you have? You have exactly what you said. You have a manifesto. Tulsi Gabbard said on X, the assassination attempt on President Trump is a logical consequence of repeatedly comparing him to Adolf Hitler. She wrote, after all, if Trump truly was another Hitler, wouldn't it be their moral duty to assassinate him? Yeah. I think we're leading right into it. Yep. Yep. Do we not as conservatives feel the same exact way about Biden? Yeah, but nobody's no, tried to shoot no, Biden. No, not yet. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, those words that they use are the words that a lot of the commentators on the right, conservative, use against Biden. No, not exactly. It, well, read them again. What isn't? Nobody has mm-hmm. said. Nobody on the well, right that I know Hitler. of have compared Biden, Biden to, to Hitler. Hitler. They have not told us that he is a threat to our democracy or that I've he's a threat that. to freedom. I've heard that. I, I have not heard that. What I have heard is is that he's a teetering old generic uh, 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 old man that has that he's a threat to our nation because he can't make decisions is what I have heard. I have not heard him compared to a murdering fascist. No, I, ever. That, that, that is true. I will. Um, and so there is a definite distinctive difference between the extreme light right and the extreme left. And the extreme left has been led into this idea that we need to promote him as the end of the world. Um, and that's the only thing that will that will matter. And so, yeah, Tulsi's right. You know, I said mean, it is the logical consequence. What was bonkers is, is like the day of, day of, 
the assassination, I was scrolling through X and libs of TikTok was posting um, a lot of the um, uh, unhinged liberals like right after the assassination attempt. And these people were livid, angry, drooling, red faced, um, upset because the assassin missed. They were just, they were, they were, they were, they were like, how can you be? And one girl even said that we were a centimeter away from being done with this guy forever. You know, it's like, how evil yeah, do you have to be? Yeah. And, and these are, these are Joe Biden staunch followers. So we don't have to call him Hitler. His own people are indicating that, that he is an evil man that wants his competition mm. eliminated. I have to share this. Uh, I won't tell you who showed me a picture on um, social media, and it was Hillary Clinton in her bathrobe. I think she had a cup of coffee in her hand at the end of the hall, and the caption, she's looking down the hall, and the caption is, what do you mean we missed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, that's that's over the top <clears throat> political commentary, but it made me laugh. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's possible that that something like that, you know, happened. I whether I would hope not. whether directly or indirectly, though, like what you're saying is, is like when you say these things over and over and over again to millions of people, you have to understand that one of those people. In all of those millions of people, that 0.001% is going to take you seriously and act on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. I mean, you have a moral obligation to guard what you say when you are a public figure of that nature, which is one of the reasons why I never really liked Trump to begin with. Because being a person who speaks to millions of people you have to really be careful what you say. You can't be a cowboy and just tell it like it is. Because if you do that, what you do is you set up the 0.0001% of insane people that there are in the United States of America to do really ridiculous things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it, it, it does go both ways. Mm -hmm. But you would hope that at some point one of these people groups would take responsibility like you know like you know how biden could win this election come out and say you know what all the things that i've said about trump have led to this point probably mm. and i'm i'm done and i want to do what's right if he did that that would boomerang him he would win this election mm. but he it would be a lie but he would win the election i agree with it that. It may not be a lie. Well, if, it, if it actually happened, we it would may hope not it be a would lie. be a true, true change of heart. I mean, it that could. Would, I mean, maybe it is this a lie. Side of accepting Christ as here's the, the Savior. Here's the thing. I don't think so. Maybe it is a lie. It doesn't matter. Right. It made it out. Saying. Perception. It's a perception thing, just like everything else. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it it, it got out. Um, it, it would change the scope of everything for sure. But yeah. for some to... reason, that nobody can see the morality of it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody sees that one of the things that I picked up on a long time ago was is that, that, that politics is always downstream of morality and culture. And culture really is downstream from morality as well. So morality kind of sets the stage for culture, and culture kind of sets the stage mm -hmm. for politics. And you might say that, no, uh, culture is downstream from politics. No, that's not true, actually, because if you see all the politicians, they react to what's going on in the culture. Mm -hmm. That's why you have these politicians who are capitulating to the extreme left and the mm -hmm. extreme right and all that, because they see a culture of people, and they want to placate those people. And that's mm -hmm. how they stay in office for mm -hmm. yep. Yep. 40, 50 years. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's they know how to play the game, yeah. but you know it's kind of come to a point where it's it's not netting any rewards anymore. They've kind of come to the end of that gravy train, where now it's like they have divided the country so much that it's it's terrifying. It is. 
It's <clears throat> terrifying. How def- I have to agree a little bit with <clears throat> with uh, the other side of the argument is that some of the news agencies are blaming Trump for this. And he has said some inciting things. Um, let me come down here. Martha Raddatz, she and George Stephanopoulos got into it. And she said, President Trump and his supporters have contributed to this violent rhetoric as well, said Stephanopoulos, well-known Democrat and former senior advisor to Bill Clinton. Raddatz agreed, absolutely, George. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that former President Trump has said. Trump warned last March of a potential death and destruction if he was charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Taken out of context, yes, but the verbiage is inciting. She pointed to a sentence that Trump supposedly said at the time, quote, our country is being destroyed as they tell us to be peaceful. Raddatz didn't elaborate in the context in which Trump allegedly made this remark. Then she said, Trump in January warned of bedlam in the country if the criminal charges against him succeeded. She continued, and of course, in March, he said, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole country. That will be the least of it. So he has contributed a bit to the rhetoric that has steamed a lot of this up. But of course, you know, he's not trying to prophesy his own assassination. And it kind of goes on here that it's just the rhetoric has been escalating and escalating and escalating and starting to use more and more extreme terms to try and have influence on the public. Yeah, and and there's no real conversation about about facts and about policy. You know, it's all just if I don't get elected, then there's going to be a blood, bloodbath, or you can't elect Donald Trump because he's a threat to our democracy. Or you know, it's like, at what point are people going to get sick of this crap and just say, hey, you know what? Let's look at the policies. You know, what does the financial policy look like? What is the <coughs> You know, what does inflation look like? What does the job market look like, you know, mm-hmm. with or without COVID? You know, it, it, you know, people aren't interested in that. that. Those were like talking points in the debate, but nobody actually brought out any numbers. Nobody brought out any, like, data. There was no, it was just, you know, he's bad. No, he's bad. No, he's worse. No, he's worse. Um, and then some bragging about how awesome that we are. That's really basically what the debate was. Yeah, it's pretty childish. And it was, it was, there was not really any kind of like, if I had been, and I've judged debates before, if I had been a debate judge for that debate, I would have failed both of them because it was really poorly presented. Um, and you know, that's our picks for what's going on. And you know, that's even could be a contributor to the psychology of this kid. You know I mean? It's like, you look at our choices and it's like, oh man, do we have any hope? And, you know, I mean, I think it's a shame that more people aren't taking a closer look at Kennedy, um, as he's running as well. You know I mean? It's, I think this is pretty much going to just eliminate him right out of the race, but mm-hmm. You know, that dude's a stud. You know, he was on a uh, uh, news thing the other day, and he was like, look, guys, I'm going to tell you, I had two brothers shot by this government. So, you know, yeah. I know what I'm getting into. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like the news media is just pounding out Trump and Biden, 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 Trump and Biden. And it makes it a very binary choice. And you would yeah. think that people who were on the left that are so opposed to binary – would be looking at that thinking, no, this is ridiculous. I don't want a binary choice. I want a more fluid choice. But no, it's just very myopic. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's only like, it can only be the, these certain things. That's all it can be. And the media just keeps pushing that narrative. And then you put on top of that, like all the different podcasts that are out there, like video podcasts or, or political podcasts that are out there. Uh, you know, I'm talking about like uh, Joe Rogan and, 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 and Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh and Russell Brand and 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 uh, you know there there's so many of them out there now that you can pick out your podcast du jour and get the kind of opinion that you want. Um, and you know you might say if you are a listener to Ben Shapiro, you know you might say, well, facts don't care about your feelings. We're just presenting the facts to a degree. Yeah, a lot of it is opinion, uh, but yeah, a lot of it is fact for sure. But you can't, like, just listen to one person's opinion about something and then just create your whole world around that. 
because there's just so much more to it that you're not picking up on. And so there's no telling how much of that is involved as well. You know I mean? There's so many leftist podcasts as well that are just really extremely far left. Then you couple with that, the whole concept that there's no genuine reality anymore. Like you step out your door and nobody really knows what reality is, is anymore. I mean, there's no such thing as male and female, you know I mean? It's like, are we living in a simulation? You know, it's like there's just all these little things, you know, it's like where truth is being called into question. Yeah. Everything's questioned. Mm -hmm. And, and no absolutes. No, we have an absolute. We do. Jesus Christ. And so truth, is there any possibility, uh, save the return of Christ that we can save this? Oh man. You know, I'm, I'm preaching on this Sunday um, coming up. We'll be talking about walk in the light as he is in the light. It's the next section of First John. And, you know, the one thing that, that First John is very clear about is that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And there's some really deep philosophical underpinnings to that. Um, and, you know, man, I think that the only way that you're going to be able to get any traction to helping people is to just be honest about everything. Truth must be supreme. Mm -hmm. It can't be opinion. You know, it must be truth. It must be truth, period. Like if Trump said some things that built into the rhetoric, it needs to be known. If Biden said some things that, that, that built into the rhetoric, it needs to be known. If Democrats said stuff that built into the rhetoric needs to be known, Republicans needs to be known, the news media needs to be known. Views like the, the or shows like The View, you know, or Bill Maher, or like you know all these shows, like you can't, you you can can you remember when um, you used to turn on network television and you would turn on Oprah, and it would be about you know some guy had cheated on his wife or like you know, Donahue or like, you know, any of those guys, it was like daily talk show was just about like life things. But now it's like those shows that used to be about life things, like just like Dr. Phil. Yeah. It's all about, politics. it's mostly politics. Now it's like everything they talk about is politics. They don't talk that much about life stuff anymore. Um, and it might be just a phase, you know, I mean, who knows, maybe they'll get out of it at some point. And there is a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about, but at some point, you got to think, well, that's being covered somewhere. So, like, why bother? Let's do something like, let's focus on what we talk about. Um, and that's kind of what the danger of having this conversation is. Because mm -hmm. it is easy to get drawn into, like, the political argument. You know, it's like, well, the right did this or the left did this. You know, it's like, as a believer, you know, we're not right or left. We shouldn't consider ourselves to be Republican or Democrat. Right. You know, we should consider ourselves to be Christians, people of the kingdom. <clears throat> yeah. We're people, people of, of the book. We're people that support truth, whether it's left or right. It's truth. There's definitely some things that, you know, we can look at and think, well, that's definitely not true. You know, it's like, okay, well, it, there's more than one gender. No, there's not. You know, physiologically, there's only two genders. That's a truth. I mean, you can think whatever you want, but there is a truth. And that is the truth, right? <laughs> Therein lies the problem. You can think whatever you want, and that's what people are doing. But see, that's the thing, right? Yeah. That's the thing. It, it's like there's no centered morality. Right. Which is one thing that if you listen to people like, um, like a lot of the older philosophers, even Nietzsche, for instance, mm -hmm. um, you know, when he made his famous statement that God is dead, it wasn't that he was celebrating the death of God. He was bemoaning it mm -hmm. because he realized that without a supreme moral authority that a person could give themselves over to, you opened yourself up for chaotic immorality, mm -hmm. um, which is what we have today. We've spent decades trying to murder God and... As a result, we have no truth. Well, you had mentioned earlier 
culture, our morality, culture, and politics in that order. Mm -hmm. And so we have no morality in this. Well, <clears throat> rephrase that. We have very little morality as a whole in this country. Yep. And therefore, our culture is, is falling apart, literally. And so politics follows that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what in we both are directions. Today. In both directions. Yeah, yeah. So if we have good morals, we could fix this country. Well, yes, no, no, I, not we. The, well, yeah, the we, Holy Spirit uh, through Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll tell you this right fun. now: if we had a centralized morality with or without Christ, mm -hmm. we would be a better off society. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you just take a look back, you know. 50 years, I mean, 100 years, when God was the centerpiece of our government, God mm -hmm. was the centerpiece of our society, we were better off morally yes. than we were, and we were better off politically than we are today. But when we, that's the one thing about, you know, removing God from the equation is that you have no, you have nothing to harness the potential of man. You have nothing to harness that chaotic potential. There's no, there is no, there is no way to create order from that. There has to be a mechanism by which order is created, and well, God I is think the what creator. We're seeing of order. Is you remove God from that, the only thing that can replace Him is self, and so that's what we're doing. We're replacing God with self. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point we, because you do become your own God. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we create our own reality, our own absolutes, our own our truth, our, our own yeah. truth. And then when and each we'll person has their own truth, then what do you have? Is chaos. It's Everyone's chaos. an island unto themselves, yep. right? Mm -hmm. yep. There is no unity. There is no community. There is no shared vision. And the people fail. Yeah. And then you get guys like this who, you know, over the course of all the things that he's heard, you know, can look at a world and think that there is so little hope that I should just sacrifice my life to kill this man that I don't even know. And that my truth is superior to his, and therefore it must I be must imposed upon him. others. Yeah. That's where we're going now, is mm -hmm. imposing right. our own truth on others who don't believe in our truth. Yep. Are we, are we getting towards the end here? I, just say what you're going to say. I, I, think it, it, I think of people listening to this podcast right now, they need hope. What can we say or do to make this time in, in our society a positive? I was alive when uh, Kennedy was assassinated. Man, that was chaos. And it was a time when the country was in good shape. But that one act tore it apart. And I, I don't want people to, at the end of this podcast, to go, oh, well, yeah, hell in a handbasket. That's where we are. I want them to come away with something positive, with something that can guide them through the next week. Perhaps for some, it's probably the next 24 hours, like this kid. You know, he needed something to stabilize him. He needed something to believe in that was good and wholesome and that it was the truth. I... I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be a part of the demise of the United States individually, in my family, in my church, in my state, in my country. I want to be a positive thing. I want to, how do we do that? How do we do? I, well, I mean, obviously at the top of that list is just be, just be the best witness that you can possibly be because we need more Christ in the world, not less. Yes. You know, what I mean, so obviously, you know, that's at the top of the list. You know, we need more believers that are out there proclaiming proclaiming Christ mm -hmm. to other people um, in a very real way. Your coworkers, your friends, your family members. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a time for evangelism, and you know, in times like this, people are looking for like what you're saying, hope. You know, and you have hope to give them. Um, and you know, I think that if you can tell a person, it's like, look, this world, whatever happens here, it's just a vapor. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like, a, it's a blip, a microscopic blip in the scope of eternity. 
that will be that will be eliminated in a vapor and in, in, in just a in a fervent heat like it's just nothing winkling of an eye and what you do with the time after that is the most important decision that you can make and that God's given you hope through Christ I think is probably the most positive that anyone can do in this situation Mm -hmm. you know um but people are strange because in today's society i don't think people really genuinely want hope i think they want more outrage outrage is the desire of today and i think that if you are a person that is looking on your news feed and looking on your social media feeds for outrage, you're not going to be able to find hope. Mm-hmm. That's true. You're, you're looking for something that's different, um, and you need to stop. One of the things that we can do practically to help us um, as individuals, quit searching for outrage. Just stop. Just stop searching for outrage. Quit looking for ways to impose yourself upon other people. Um, And just focus on yourself for a minute. You know, like, what is my condition with Christ? You know, am am I the type of person that is unselfish and kind and gentle and, and faithful and loving and joyful? You know, these are the fruits of the Spirit. That's what we should be we pr- be promoting, mm-hmm. you know, and in this situation, you know, it's, it, it's, it's tragic. It's terrible that this young man has, has, has died. And then another man has lost his life because we can't do anything but focus on outrage and name calling and, and, and evil rhetoric on both sides. Mm-hmm. And it's got to stop, man, before more people die. And, and if, if it just continues, There's not a lot of hope that you can give people. But if we change at the grassroots level, one thing that the past five years has proven to us in kind of the whole warfare against wokeism is that when people decide that they want something better, it actually does affect change, you know, eventually. It's not fast. It's not quick. I mean, you know, look at Disney, for instance. You know, I mean, it's like at some point they're going to run out of money because their stock just keeps plummeting because people are just rejecting the wokeness. Um, And, you know, that will pass at some point. If people choose better, you know, it's like I don't want to watch the wokeness, and so I'm not going to contribute to it. And so I'm not going to be a part of it. You know, it's like and Mm -hmm. and. And that's, that's, that's an act. That's action by not participating. And I think too many of us today, we participate passively by watching the media, by responding on Facebook and other uh, media outlets uh, negatively, trying to combat it. I think what I hear you saying is just, just, well, Leave it alone. Let if it you, die. If you can't, <clears throat> if you can't control your feelings and your thoughts when you're watching those things, then you should not be watching them at all. Mm-hmm. It's just not good for you. If you can watch something like that and you can walk away from it and go, "Wow, the world is really in need of Christ," and what can I do to make things better? True. Then you're probably okay. I'm thinking about the nine out of ten people but, that can't. Do but that. well, yeah, most of the people that you see on social media responding to X, Y, or Z, yeah. you know, it's all they're doing is eliciting or 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 promoting more outrage. Mm-hmm. It's like we just want to be mad all the time. We just want to be mad and angry and right. We want to be we right. want to be right. You know, and it's like nobody's willing to admit that they're wrong. Yeah. Uh, sadly. Mm-hmm. Um, where if we could just take a little bit of self-reflection, we would all be better off and, and, and look within ourselves and say, how closely aligned to Christ am I? You know, how, how would Christ respond to this, you know, situation? You know I mean? What would Jesus do is a legitimate question and ask yourself mm-hmm. before you make that post, you know, before you comment on that X post where it's, you know, like showing the, you know, the guy up on the thing. And then there's like the conspiracy about he didn't shoot 
until five shots later. And then, you know, it must be this conspiracy or that conspiracy or this agenda or that agenda. It's like, no, I can tell you right now that all these agendas, whether this country survives it or not, really make no difference. The only thing that matters is, is that God's kingdom is eternal. Mm-hmm. That's right. And if you have that mindset, then it doesn't matter what happens in this world. But it doesn't, that, that, doesn't matter. That, that mindset is so far from so many people that God's kingdom is eternal, that God's kingdom is real, that Jesus <clears throat> Christ did come. He is the Son of God. He did die for our sins. That is so far from so many people. Well, you we have to make it known. And the peace that it provides you is just, if it's genuinely in your heart, mm-hmm. the peace that it provides you, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, it changes the way that you see everything. Yeah. Like That's... when you, like when I first saw this, this happen, um, and I watched the footage of the bullet, and then I saw that this young man had had died um and then i saw what trump did in response and then i saw that the young the guy had had perished in the stands um my first thought was i wonder if that young man knew christ because if he didn't the eternity that he faces now Mm -hmm. is way more terrifying than anybody wants to imagine. And I, I don't, I didn't see any Christians espousing that, you know, that's grace. It's like, yeah, he did a really nefarious thing. He did a terrible, terrible thing, but he's a human being too. And he has a soul that God loved and loves still. And um, the guy who was in the stands, mm-hmm. you know, he was, a, he was a human being. And if, if people could, at the risk of sounding like a hippie, if people could just learn to love each other more and hate each other less, there would be a lot less of this kind of stuff. You know, yep. disagree with love, truth and love. You know, it, that's kind of what people on the right and left need to learn. It's like, how can we unite in a conversation in love and promote that idea that we love each other because we're created in the image of God? How can we do that? That would that would be one of the first steps that you could that you could do to help to kind of bring this country together because the idea that well we're going to if everybody in the nation had Jesus Christ then the world the the nation would be different because we would all be saved well yeah that would be great but that's not going to happen mm-hmm. it's a pipe dream mm-hmm. so what's what is something practically that we can do well you can quit spouting hateful things you could just quit saying hateful things and, and just love people, you know? it's Whether you're on the left or right. Whether you're on the left or With not. With or without Christ. You know, it, be I could have been fine. outraged when I watched libs of TikTok and I watched these, you know, pink-haired, blue-haired people um, yelling at their top of their lungs, crying and, and weeping because the assassin missed Trump. I could be deeply offended by that. And outraged. And it is outrageous. That concept is outrageous. But what occurs to me as a pastor, as a person who is a follower of Christ, is it's really, really, really sad that this person has gotten to a point in their life where they have zero value over another human being's life. They have zero consideration for it. It's as if they don't even exist. Like they're just a thing. And that's where the media and these podcasts and all this stuff has gotten us. It's this place where we don't look at each other as as human beings anymore. Um, And you have to be intentional to change that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<clears throat> scripture, can't think of the address right now, but treat others as better than yourselves. That, that is, <laughs> goes so against the grain of humanity, but it's what Christ asks us to do. Yeah. Through Paul. Yeah. Treat others as better than yourself. That is so <clears throat> hard with the hatred and the vitriol that we have in our society today yeah. to do that. But he calls us to that. I do really wish that people would learn that through this whole thing. Um, and guard their tongues, guard what mm-hmm. they say. Proverbs eighteen twenty one: death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what you say is important. Yeah. The words that come out of your mouth are important. Uh, and and I hope that through this instance, through the media and through podcasts and these shows and, you know, all these people like Whoopi Goldberg and they're, they're all these people are just saying all this like ridiculous stuff. You know, it's like people just learn that what you say is relevant and it's important and it is potentially harmful. Just got to be careful. And when somebody... Uh, a celebrity like that says stuff like that, it almost gives the rest of us license to do this. Yeah, we, we think that and, we have permission. Yeah. Yeah. And so it just promotes it. Yep. And you should only get what you have permission to do from Christ, mm-hmm. from the Bible, from your from the Word of God. That's what you have permission to do. And and God has told you to live at peace if possible. All. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we should do. We should live at peace if it is all possible. Do you have any final words for us, Ken? Well, I think what we're seeing is uh, a a result, a product of the battle of for for minds. The news media, all of that, is battling for the mind, and we know behind it, there is the enemy of our souls is battling for our soul. In many ways, through our minds. And there is, there is a different reality we've been talking about. There is the reality that you read about, that you hear about, that you watch. But there, there is the ultimate reality is, like you were saying, God's kingdom. That is the ultimate reality. That's where the ultimate truth lies. That's where the eternity lies. And so we at some level need to become unaffected as Christians, as believers, by all of this. Because, like you said, it's irrelevant in eternity. And so I just want to encourage all our listeners, spend less time looking at the falsehood that's being out there, the darkness. Spend more time looking at the light, looking at the true reality of the kingdom of God and living for that and demonstrating that with your life, proclaiming it with your words, your beliefs, your values, your actions, all of that. Line that all up with the kingdom of God. And... The rest of this stuff is going to go the way that it will. God knows where's it, where it's going. We're yeah. not going to change it. We're not going to start a grassroots movement that reverses the trajectory of this country. Mm-mm. But we can create a better reality around ourselves, our families, our homes, our churches, our communities by living for that ultimate reality. And that can change other people. It can change one heart at a time to save those who will be saved and who want to be saved. And we can do his work and not feed into the darkness and the enemy's agenda to try and tear this country and everyone in it apart. Amen. So I think that's, that's yeah. our mission, you know. Go build and make disciples. I love Go people. Reach and build. Love people. Be about our Father's business. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep the main thing the main thing. Greg? What's your shirt shirt say there, Ken? It says, we are for I am. <laughs> I love that. That's If that's, you know your scripture, you know what that means. If you don't know yes, your scripture, that yes, makes no sense the, to you. The, I am is God. Um, I, I, I'm, Chris, I don't know. Maybe... I don't know if you were the first person to say this or not, but I remember it coming from your mouth and, and I re- repeated it dozens of times in that no matter what's going on in the world today, no matter how 
your life sucks uh, with turmoil, relationships, cancer, whatever it is, it's dragging you down. Our job does not change, and that is to preach Christ. And that I, I think yep. that is so important for this church, Alabama Baptist Church, and the listeners out there to grab a hold of. Uh, we can look around and we can, we can just totally give up. We can get angry. We can, um, you know, reject society. We can embrace it and go down a, a horrible path. Or we can remember that our job doesn't change, and that is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself, and to preach Christ. Preach Christ wherever we go. So important. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right. Well, that about does it for us today. As always, thank you for joining us. If you have a comment or a question or an idea for an episode, send us an email at 3p at athelbaptistchurch.org where Ken waits patiently and excitedly for your for your emails. If your, idea, <laughs> if your idea gets used on the show, you could be the recipient of the now world-famous 3p coffee mug. Yes, your coffee does taste better in it, by the way. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and share it with all your friends and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Your liking and sharing of this podcast helps us to get this platform out to as many people as possible. Thanks to Athel Baptist Church and its members for their generous support of this ministry. And again, thank you for listening. Until next time, remember the Great Commission. Go into all the world and reach the lost with the gospel and build disciples who can do the same. And with that, we are out.